Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> First of all, I think all the kids and all the young men at the back, um, you know, deserve you know all the credit. Um, I've been to many of these awards, but nothing on this scale, you know. Um, and for you know all the football you played, and for Nini winning the league, and all the top goal scorers, and all the clean sheets you've kept. I think, you know, obviously it's a, a great credit to yourselves and I think you deserve a round of applause from the parents and everybody else. And vice versa, I think all the young kids and all the young men at the back should put their hands together to the parents, um, to the committee, to Paul and all his staff. Because um, it's not easy uh, running a, a, a football club, club of this obviously size and you know the commitment that your parents and everybody else put in and sometimes as young kids you know I can remember I never appreciated it so um, a round of applause to your parents all the nights to give up and all the petrol all the diesel and all the miles to keep travelling you know commend with you you know I, I'd just like to say you know Paul asked me to say a few words in terms of um, you know, how I got into football and it's, it's hard to, you know, to, to follow that. You know, it's all of that. You know, I started off, you know, where some of you lads are now. Um, Sunday league, you know, on Saturday. Um, playing youth football, playing men's football when I was 14. And, um, you know, all I can say to you is, you know, keep working hard. Like the, you know, Forest lads and Notts County lads have said, keep working hard. You do need a lot of luck. Um, you know, and you might be, you know, you might be the top player now. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you get to that stage, um, that 15, 16, 17 year old, you're going to be the best player. Because we all develop differently. Um, so if you're a little kid now and you're not getting game time, you know, if somebody's scoring more goals than you and somebody's playing more minutes than you, all I'd say to you, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, you develop physically, mentally differently and your time will come. You know, you've got to keep that belief. And as some of the county players and the Forest players say, keep working hard at your game. And most importantly, enjoy your football. Okay? You must enjoy your football. Um, you know, you've got, you've got to enjoy it. And it, it, it is about winning. We all like to win. But again, you know, people ask why, what's the problem with youth football in this country, why we're not producing the best players, is because I think there's too much Sunday football and Saturday football emphasised on winning games. You know, I, I've been abroad, I went, I went away with Wolves, I worked for Wolves Academy for five years, and I went away, we went to Spain and Portugal, and seen how the top clubs do it out there, and at a young age, they're not bothered about five-a-side games. They will do technical drills, but hours on end. And I think that's what something us British players can take away from it. Hence why the foreigners can handle the football better than British players. Um, so it's not about winning, even though we love to win. Um, you know, it's about development. And, you know, I don't know the history of, of, of Hopnell Warriors, but sitting in this, you know, this audience tonight, there's a chance there's going to be two or three of you are going to make a living out of football. Um, and you know, as, as coaches, as coaches, if we can develop them, and it is about development, it's about development. Like I say, as much as we want to win, if we can develop the, the, the players, there's nothing better as a coach sitting here tonight and, and a, young, a young lad, maybe under the 10s or one of the under 16s now, you know, in, in, in how many years time you see them on TV and you play the part in their career. Because there's a good chance that somebody will make a good living at football sitting in this stadium. So, like I said, enjoy your football. Parents, coaches, let's back the kids. Let's not put too much pressure on them. Because uh, there's, enough, there's enough pressure in life as it is with schoolwork and so on and so on. Um, but just go and enjoy your football and, 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 like I say, work hard. And you will find your level. Whatever it will be, you'll find your level. Okay, thanks. Just got time for a few questions um, from the floor to Des. So, anybody got questions? Stick your hand up. I know a few of you have. Got one over here. Eighteen. 
I think that's our job. I just want to know um, what is your most enjoyable moment in your footballing career? Most enjoyable moment? Um, I know, it's, 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 I, was, I started off at Leicester City. I went to Leicester City and it was my last game, I remember. It was my last game. You know, do you, do you still have like the interleague, the pick of the leagues? No? Like, so you've got all the best players from the league play against all the leagues. So it was the last game, I was 16, and I, I come from a great area. I, I went to a great school, I had kids, I'm from Wolverhampton, but I had kids who were my age, and I was, I was never the best player. Um, and I had kids my age, teammates, that were going to Arsenal, were going to Stoke, were going to Wolves, and I always thought, well, I'm, I, I'm just as good, how come I'm not getting picked up? And it was the last game of the season, the under-16s, and it was a final. Um, and I got spotted, we, we won the game, blah de blah whatever happened. And a, a Leicester scout approached me, and he offered me a scholarship for a YTS back in them days. Um, and that was the greatest moment for me, is, is, is getting that scholarship, and being released by David Pleat, and then coming back, and then proving people wrong, because you've always got to prove people wrong in life. Whatever, whatever you do, um, people are going to tell you that you're no good, people won't believe in you. Um, you've got to keep that belief. And, um, you know, whatever you do, kids, you know, um, like I say, your time will come. We all develop different. And my time wasn't at, at probably 18, 19. And I went non league, and then Swansea City brought me. And, and, and the, you know, everything else is history. So, you know, having a taste of it as a 16 year old, a pro and then going back into non-league and, and having that belief to come back and I'm proud of myself, um, working hard to come back and, and carving out a decent career for myself. So that's a, that's a proud it's my whole career, really. Thanks, Des. We've got a, another question. And then here over there. We'll go over there. Oh, actually, we've got, it'd be good to have one from the player, actually. So we'll have one from the player and then I'll, I'll come to you as well. So how old was you when you first joined Forest? Um, I was 21, 21 when I, when I first joined from um, Swansea. Yeah, so I, I, I played against Frank Clark about four times that season. I was at Swansea, he was late Norwich manager, we played twice in the league and a couple of times in a couple of cups and he came to Forest and I was one of his, I think I was second or third signing um, after Forest got relegated in the early 90s. I can't cast my mind back that far. Not that old. I am really. Okay, got another question from Neil. Yes, um, one of the questions I want to ask is, you've seen um, Brian Laws, Viv Anderson, some of the Forest great right backs, how did, uh, how did the pressure get to you? Did, was it a, a factor? It was, it was massive. Um, because I was, you know, I came from Swansea. You know, Forrest had just got relegated, obviously Cluffy had just left and, and Frank had to build a, a side that was going to get back to promotion. And he'd he, he done that in the end, you know, my, my first season we got, we, we, you know, we won promotion straight away, back to the Premier League. But, you know, I walked into a changing room from, you know, not long being a non-league player, then going into a, a third division team with Swansea, with no big players there, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm sitting next to people like Stuart Pearce and Stan Collymore and and all those kind of people, Brian Law, Steve Chettle, Mark Crosley, and you know, my head's spinning, I'm wondering what the hell is all this about? You know, and, and the first few months were difficult because obviously Lawsy, Lawsy, you know, I don't know how many years he played for Forest, he must have over 10 years, and he was the main man at right back, and you know, I came in, and the first few months, I think a few of the Forest supporters never took to me. I didn't have the best of starts, um, you, know, and I, you know, and I was due to take over from a legend, really, and. It took a while for me to, to settle in and, and in the end, you know, um, you know, I, I kind of, not, not Sid Laws off, but I kind of met the right, the right back man on birth and, and, and really kicked on from there. Thank you. Okay, uh, we've got time for probably just a couple more. Would you, would you like a couple more questions? Okay. What's your name? Sean. What? Sean. Warriors. I know you played for Warriors, which team? What was your greatest ever game? What, would you, what was your greatest greatest ever game? Oh gosh, 
Wait till you the game. Well, it's a tough one. There's, there's been a few. Um, I've not scored many goals in my career. I've scored six goals in my professional career, so I'm proud of all those goals. Um, I remember scoring on my 24th birthday at Villa Park, one each, um, in front of my family and that, so that was a, a proud moment. But just, I think just all the, the, the European run we had, um, all the promotions, you know, and, and, and those big games, you know, playing at, at Man United and beating Man United, they've not been beaten. You know, for two and a half years at Old Trafford and going there and beating them. Um, just, you know, just virtually all the wins really. There's so many to, to talk about, you know, there's not really one that sticks out. Just, just all the games really, really enjoyed it. Thanks, Des. Okay, we've got a question over here from... Callum. And your question is... Um, who did you enjoy playing for the most? Oh. <laughs> and, and just just to remind you, it's being videoed, and it will be on the web. <laughs> obviously, obviously, um, you know we had a few relegations at Forest, but you know I, must, I can honestly say the best times, um, obviously, was it was it Nottingham? I was here for six years. Um, obviously, we played County and always walked them. But, uh, Obviously we never played them that often because they never were that level, then, you know. <laughs> no, obviously we had relegations um, at Forest, but, but as a whole, as, as being settled as, as, a, as a player and, and, and settling down in the city, you know, I've lived in St Albans when I played for Watford, I've lived in Swansea, I've lived in Leicester, I've lived in Forest, you know, Nottingham as a city and, and the people, I'm not just saying it because you're here, as a people, and as a city, you know, when I was playing for Forest, you know, it's a great city, and it still is. I had a good night out there last Saturday. Um, and, and the old package, the club and the people and, and the city, like I say. So, obviously, Nottingham, uh, with all the success we had there, you know, it sticks, sticks out my mind more than, obviously, you know, um, places like West Brom, where, I, where we got promoted as well, and, and uh, good times at Swansea and at Watford as well. Okay, Daz, go on. Got well, a question here on Twitter which says, um, is it true your biggest regret is not playing for the Magpies? <laughs> uh, that's not the question. Dave's got a question. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, good evening. Um, as a player, what would you... Just, can you just, just, just keep the noise down just for a few seconds? We're, we're, we're nearly running into the uh, final stop part of the show, so just keep your noise down if you would, please. Yeah, Daz, um, as a player, what would you consider to be your greatest achievement? Greatest achievement? Oh. I think just making it, making it as a pro, obviously, again, I said before, you know, you look at, you look at all the, the, you know, the promotions and the things that you've won and, and you know, um, you know, the place you've gone to, just, just being a pro, I think, because, you know, standing there, I can't tell you how great it is to, to be a pro footballer. You know, you're getting paid really good money to keep fit. Um, you know, you travel the world, uh, you pay for next to nothing. You know, I, I haven't bought a pair of boots since I was 16, and I'm, I'm 40 now, and I'm still getting free boots. <laughs> you know, and um, it's, just a, just, just, it's just a great pleasure to, to be, a, you know, a footballer. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's brilliant. And, and I can't stress to the young kids enough. That's why the, you know these lads on the on the video tapes said to work hard because the rewards out there, especially now again, the rewards um, are great out there, really. Right. Um, we're going to have one more question, but before we have that last question, we're doing the raffle straight after this. So if you haven't, this is to the teams. If you haven't got your raffle tickets, back to Heather who's on the, uh, and John over there, waving. So you've got about two minutes to get your, your raffle tickets back before we, we, we draw those. So we've got one last question for Des, and then we, we, we're going to have to close that off. Who wants to ask the last question? Uh, what was your job before you became a footballer? Sorry? What was your job before you came, became a footballer? I'm lucky enough, I've only ever done football. That's, that's, that's what I mean, you know, you need that bit of luck. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm really ungrateful because football, 
you know, it's, it's brought me everything. There's, there's, I don't think I would have been able to do a job, and it would, you know, to give me what I've got now. Um, you know, so you know, I've only ever done football. Um, I'm, you know, looking to carve a career out in management now. Uh, but you know, football, like I say, you know, if you get a chance, you know, to be a pro footballer, and you, you know, it's, it is hard work. You know, getting up every day and having to train. You know, people think you get paid good money. And we, we don't deserve it, but you know, we really do work hard um, and, and there is a lot of demands on you um, But the rewards it brings you, you know, it, it far ways, outweighs everything else um, so, so it's been a privilege to have played, you know, or play soft, travelled around the world You know, to win what I've won, uh, to meet the people I've met You know, to be standing up here talking to you, you know, um, you know there's nothing else I could have done that would have brought me what I've got today. So, thanks again. Okay. Well, I would just like you to uh, just show your appreciation again for Des. He's given his, uh, his, his whole evening up for us tonight. He's given us some really inspiring words for the lads. Some great questions. So, Des, look. Oh.